So today we are going to try to find out if Logic Pro X works on an almost 10 year old white MacBook. The MacBook in this case is a 2.4 GHz Core 2 Duo CPU. It has 4 gigs of memory and I replaced the hard drive with an SSD. In addition I installed actually macOS Mojave on this uh, particular computer. Uh, it's a kind of a hack because it doesn't officially support it, but if you look in the video description I have a link to the video where I explain how you can do this yourself if you have an old Mac. So check it out. So here I have Logic running. Uh, I have loaded my most popular track on uh, Spotify anyways. It's called Starlight Skies. So I'm going to play uh, a little part of it just so you can see that it works. As you can see I don't have don't have any cables or special effects here, so let's go. Yeah, I guess that's enough. Uh, the sound quality isn't uh, perfect from this computer, but uh, I think it keeps it uh, authentic if I just play it directly from uh, from this uh, laptop. So, uh, so how does this work? Well, I'm going to explain how this works, but before we do that, I would appreciate a subscribe to this channel. This is a very small YouTube channel, so any subscriptions or likes, comments, actually any engagement is a huge help, especially now in the beginning. In addition, I have a Patreon page where I have Google Drive folders of all of my music, so you can just download everything. Uh, it's patreon.com forward slash Bjokib, so please check it out. Okay, so let's uh, reposition the camera, focus on the Mac, and uh, take a look at this uh, project. Okay, so here is uh, the track. I have to film the display because running a screen recording software on this Mac is uh, suicide for this computer. It will uh, not work. Um, it takes up too many resources. Uh, to make this track work, I have uh, done something called freezing tracks. As you can see here, I have some. Uh, you have a green button here. What happens when you press that green button is that Logic will render out this track to an audio file instead. And playing back an audio file is much less resource intensive compared to playing the synth in real time. When you freeze a track, you basically bypass the synth and you replace it with an audio file instead even if it looks like uh, you have midi notes here and you actually have but uh, they won't do anything right now so if you try to go in here and if you try to change something i'm not sure if it works here in logic but uh, i think you can yeah as you see here it says the current track is frozen and it asks if you want to unfreeze it. That means if you have, want to change the bass notes or change anything really, you have to unfreeze the track and you have to render it out again. It takes a little bit more time, but this is a kind of a one way of using uh, slower computers for a music production. You just have to freeze uh, tracks. As you can see here, I have kick, clap, open hi-hat, closed hi-hat, well, yeah, drum stuff. And uh, over here I have some noise, some reverse effects, or some effects. They are already audio files, so you don't have to freeze audio files. Uh, if we look at uh, number 8 here to number 14, all of these are synths. So, as I said earlier in this video, this is a 2.4 gigahertz, uh, very old uh, MacBook. And it's actually running two um, tracks here. It's running the main lead, that's not frozen. And uh, the main lead is using the synth uh, called Spire. 
and I also run uh, uh, the arpeggio here and that's diva if I'm not mistaken yeah that's diva so we can uh, we can uh, play the track and we can take a look at the CPU meter I'm going to show show you something here so let's place it here so we have almost so we have two tracks here one uh, one synth on number 12 one synth number 13 they are playing in real time they are not frozen everything everything else is frozen so it looks like this CPU wise So as you can see there, the CPU meters uh, is uh, how many cores you have. So I have two cores here. So it goes to about half. So there's some things you can do to uh, save the uh, CPU cycles. For this arpeggio, for example, if we open up Diva here, you can see under here, under accuracy, it's uh, over there. This is uh, a quality setting on uh, the real-time playback. As you can see here, I have set it to draft. But you can choose between fast, great and divine. So if let's try to set it to divine and see how that works. As you, as you can see, the CPU meter went up a little more there, but it still uh, worked. Uh, let's see if we can get it to choke here. The backing lead is uh, played by... Oh, actually, it's... Uh... Oh, I think I uh, confused uh, the synths here. Um, let's see, uh, Diva... Diva is running the arpeggio. Main lead is uh, Spire. Okay, so if we go into Spire and see... Okay, so we can see her unison mode, it, mode is one voice. If we increase it to, let's say, uh, 8. And uh, increase voices here to 16. Let's see how that goes. Yeah, as you can see, I get a system overload. And it's basically the CPU saying, Hey, I, well, I know you want to play this, but... Well, I can't, so sorry, I have to overload the system, and yeah. What you're gonna do about it? Well, what we are going to do is uh, reduce the quality. And we are going to um, reduce the quality on uh, Diva. We are going to reduce it to draft. And we are going to try again. So yeah, if you want to have a lot of synths, your CPU uh, have to be, uh, you have to consider the CPU usage. So there you have it. It's just a matter of freezing some tracks and the computer will be able to play it up in real time. But when you freeze a track, you basically make it as an audio file and an audio file is much less demanding for the CPU to play back compared to playing back the synth in real time. When you play back the synth in real time, it has to ask the CPU to calculate all of the sound generators and all of the effects under the hood. And if you have uh, two or three demanding synths on an old and slow computer, it'll, it will probably choke up and it won't work. Uh, if you are only mostly working with audio, the CPU isn't that important. I'm not saying that it isn't important, but maybe a little less important compared to if you are going to use a lot of uh, VSTs and a lot of synths. So when you are in the market for a new computer, you have to think a little about your workflow. If you are just 
maybe playing a guitar, uh, singing, recording a synth from audio, meaning you work with a lot of audio files. The CPU isn't maybe that important. Maybe you should focus more on perhaps uh, getting a good SSD because you have to read files from a hard drive and if you have a good SSD the hard drive will be uh, fast and uh, playing a lot of audio files put a lot of stress, stress on your hard drive instead of your CPU. And again if you use a lot of, as I said, a lot of synths you maybe have to think a little more about your CPU. So in a computer you basically have uh, three basic things you have to think about and that's the CPU, its uh, memory and it's your uh, hard drive. That's the three things, things that affect uh, performance. Uh, memory is basically how many samples or how many tracks you can have loaded at the same time. And um, to be honest, I think you'll get a lot far, a far with eight gigabytes and sixteen gigabytes. I have never needed anything more, but uh, it depends all on, on your workflow. So, even though this computer is um, almost ten years old, uh, it has the latest Logic Pro X, and I installed the latest uh, operating system. The only thing that's limited it's uh, the CPU and um, yeah and memory and the hard drive. So I hope you learned something today. Um, if you are uh, if you like videos like this, I would appreciate a subscription to the YouTube channel. It's a small channel, so any engagement is hugely uh, appreciated. In addition, I have a Patreon page where you can download all of my music in a convenient Google Drive folder. Uh, so uh, check that out if you want. It's patreon.com uh, forward slash slash jokeib. Okay, so until next time, uh, take care and uh, talk to you later. Bye bye.